I think you have sufficient idea for vectors. Right. Okay. So now we can start with this. We have electromagnetic induction. So what does electromagnetic induction mean? It simply means inducing of electric current using magnetic effect. So when electric current is generated or induced in a wire using magnetic effect, we call it as electromagnetic induction. So this, this was a topic of, deleted in 10th grade, right, sir? Yeah, in 10th it was deleted. And here in 12th, it is present in 12th also. Uh, it is present in depth. So we we are going to start with in a little bit uh, my new topics we will do. That means uh, greater than what was there in grade 10. Okay. So oh, electromagnetic sorry. induction, basically here we want to do how to jet induce electricity. So electromagnetic induction is the method of inducing electric current method of inducing electric current using magnetic jam. So our theory starts with that if in class grade, in grade 10 we have studied that you have a current carrying conductor. So if you have a current carrying conductor, then we observe magnetic field lines around the conductor, right? Suppose there is this a current carrying conductor and here we have some current I flowing through this wire. So here I have the current. So I will observe the magnetic field lines around, around the wire, around circular in shape. So the magnetic field lines will be something like this. They will be circular in shape. Yes. And the direction of the magnetic field lines were given by the Maxwell rule. Yes. So we use the Maxwell rule to find out the direction of the magnetic field lines. So this was the Maxwell rule which gave us the direction of magnetic field. So point we studied that if there is current, we can get magnetic field around the wire. Okay. So here we have current produces magnetic field. This we know current produces magnetic field. Now we are going to try the other way. The either other way that means if you have magnetic field, if you have magnetic field, so will there be any current? Can you induce current? Can there be any current if you have magnetic field around? So here I have the wire, and let us keep this wire in a magnetic field. So I put up a magnet here. Let this magnet point in, let this be the north pole of the magnet, south pole of the magnet, so that the magnetic field lines, they are crossing from north pole to the south pole. And these magnetic field lines, they are also crossing the wire, they are passing through the wire. So what can we say about the electric current in this wire? Will there be any, any electric current in this wire? Yes, so will there be any current in this wire? Yes. Yes, sir. The answer is no. If you place a wire and two mag and a magnet like this, so there will not be a current. We have placed this wire in a magnetic field, so there will not be any current. But yes, we can induce current not by placing it, but by varying the magnetic field that is crossing the wire. So for that. Here, whatever magnetic field lines are crossing this wire, if they change, if the magnetic field lines crossing the wire change, then there will be an induced current in the wire. So how do how are we going to do, do this? If you uh, come, let us complete the circuit here, and we put here a galvanometer in the circuit. We put here a galvanometer which will show deflection 
if there is any current in the circuit. So here we are putting a galvanometer. Now, if there is any current in the circuit, then this galvanometer will show deflections. So there is magnetic, there is magnetic field lines. And if there is any current, the galvanometer will show deflection. So we do not observe any deflections in the galvanometer. That means there is no current. Now, there is another way. If we try to move this wire between these magnets, if we try to move this wire between the magnets up and down, okay? So if you try to move this wire between between this, mag, this magnet, so the fig, uh, magnetic field lines which are crossing the wire is changing. The field lines that are crossing the wire, they are changing and hence there will be a current induced in the wire. You will, the galvanometer will show us a momentary current when there is a deflection in the wire. When there is a movement in the wire. If you observe a movement in the wire, so there will be a current induced in this wire. Okay. So the current is there only till there is a movement, only till there is a movement in the wire. If you stop the movement of the wire, there is no current. If you are taking this wire inside, so there is a deflection in the current. If you uh, let the wire come up, so the galvanometer will still show you deflection, but in the opposite direction. So that means the direction of current induced here, it depends, the direction of current induced here, it depends on the direction of motion of the wire. So you can move this wire up and down, and in this way, you can induce current in this wire. So what is actually happening here, for this, we also define a term which we call as magnetic flux. So let's define a term, magnetic flux. And with the magnetic flux, we'll try to study that how the current is induced here. Magnetic flux it is the number of magnetic field lines it is the number of magnetic field lines crossing a given area area normally normally means perpendicularly so if you are given some area and suppose here i place some sheet or an or any area here so the magnetic field lines cross that area now the number of magnetic field lines which are crossing the area will be equal to the flux. So here we take this area and let us say you have some magnetic field lines which are crossing this like this at certain angle. So the magnetic field lines are crossing this at a certain angle. Now I can find out the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux phi will be, de will be denoted by the formula B A cos theta where B represents the magnetic field line. So, the amount of magnetic field line crossing this area normally, that means there are magnetic field lines which are crossing this area, but out of these magnetic field lines, we will take only that component. Say, see here, the magnetic field lines are crossing like this. So, they are making two components with the area. One component is making 90 degree with the, some part of the magnetic field line is making 90 degree with the area and some part of the magnetic field line is passing parallel to the magnetic field line. So we will be taking that component which is passing perpendicular to the magnetic field. So this component of the magnetic field will be taken which passes perpendicular to the area of cross-section. So here, all the magnetic field lines which are crossing this wire perpendicularly, so they induce, if they, if they change, if the field lines which, uh, if the field lines change, then there will be a current induced in this wire. We will observe momentary deflection in the galvanometer. So we will perform different activities. We will see different activities by which we can induce uh, electric current. Okay. Similar to this, now we have understood that there should be a variation of the number of feed lines. There should be a variation of the feed lines which are crossing the, uh, crossing the wire. So if the uh, feed lines change, then there should be an induced EMF in the in the circuit. So for this, now we take a 
solenoid. To study this, we take a solenoid. Let's check up a solenoid like this. And so this is an air core solenoid. And now we connect again, but this solenoid is not connected to any battery. This solenoid is connected just to a galvanometer. So the galvanometer will show deflection whenever there is current in this pipe. Okay. Now, if I have a magnet here, suppose I take a magnet and I move this magnet first. So this is magnet north pole, south pole. And now I try to move this magnet towards the coil. If I move this magnet towards the coil, so the field lines of the magnet, which are there, the field lines of the magnet, they will they will change. The field lines of the magnet which are crossing this coil, they will change. Okay. At this point, the field lines will be some other and as the magnet moves towards the coil, the field lines will change. If you just keep the magnet here, there will not be any effect. But if you move the magnet towards the coil, okay. so if you move the magnet towards the coil, there will be a change in the number of magnetic field lines which are crossing this coil. And hence, we expect and we expect a current in the coil. Hence, the galvanometer will show us a deflection. Okay. So, this principle is called as this phenomena or this principle is called as electromagnetic induction. So, electromagnetic induction is a phenomena of inducing electric current by changing or varying magnetic field, magnetic flux. Okay. So, what do you think uh, will happen if we bring the magnet and put the magnet inside the coil. What should happen if I bring the magnet and put the magnet inside the coil? Yes. What should happen? Yes, anyone? Will there be current induced or not? If I take this magnet and put it inside the coil, so will I observe any current? Yes, sir, there will be. There will be a current. Okay. So, if you take this magnet, so till the magnet is moving, there will be a current. But if you put this magnet inside the coil stationary, there will not be any current as there is no variation or no change in the magnetic field lines. Okay. So this is... So if it is inside, sir, if it is still without any movement, sir, there will be not uh, any Yeah, current. there will not be any current because there is no variation oh. in the magnetic field lines. Okay. So it is the phenomena of inducing electric current by varying magnetic field lines. Your magnetic field lines should keep varying. Then only there will be a mesh current. By varying magnetic field, we call this phenomena as electromagnetic induction. Okay. So I hope you have understood now. What will happen? What do we expect if the magnet is moved away from the coil? Will there be any current? No. See, when you are moving this magnet away from the coil, so in that case also, if, the, if you are moving the magnet away from the coil, so in that case, uh, what is happening if you are moving the magnet away from the coil? So in that case, again, the magnetic fields are changing. If the magnet is nearby this coil, a number of large magnetic field lines were crossing this. And if you are moving this away from the coil, so the field lines are decreasing. There is a change of magnetic field lines so still, you will observe a deflection in the galvanometer. So like still, when we are uh, taking it away, sir, like we are moving it away or just putting it at away place. When we when we are moving it away. Okay. You, then first you are, yeah, first you are taking it towards the coil. When you are taking it towards the coil, we find that there is an increase of magnetic field lines which is crossing this wire, crossing this solenoid. So there will be a current induced in this galvanometer. If 
you take that magnet away from the coil. So in that case, we observe that the magnetic field lines are decreasing. The, num the magnetic field lines which are crossing the wire, they are decreasing and hence there will be less, uh, there will be a current induced in the circuit, but now the current will be induced in opposite direction. Okay. So for current to be induced, we should have a varying magnetic field. The magnetic field should keep on varying. Okay. Okay. Another question. Can we expect a current in this coil if we keep the magnet stationary and keep the coil moving? Can we expect any uh, anything? Have you got my question? Yeah. No, sir. Can you repeat, sir? See, we have kept the magnet stationary, but now we are moving this coil towards the magnet and away from the magnet. Then there still would be current in the galvanometer. Uh, Dhananjay and Jasman, what's your point of view? Yes, there will be a current. Even if you keep the magnet stationary and make this coil move towards the, towards the magnet or away from the magnet. So in that case, there will be an electric current induced in that coil. And the, the field lines which are crossing this wire crossing this coil, they are changing. If you move yes. this coil towards the magnet, the magnetic field lines are increasing. If you are moving this coil away from the magnet, so the magnetic field lines are decreasing and hence there will be a magnet and electric current. Okay, So an electric current will be induced in the coil. Understood? Now, here we are moving. Is there any way by which we can induce the current without motion? Let's try some other method. So now we keep, here we keep uh, some magnetic material. Magnetic material means it, it can be may, it can be magnetized. It can be magnetized. So it, it's like a soft iron which can be magnetized. And I wind two coils on it. So I put up here two coils. So first coil I put up here, I call this as the primary coil. So this is my coil which is carrying current. So my this coil is carrying some current over here. And I have a key, tapping key. And here I connect a battery. So here I have put a tapping key. Then here I put another coil on the same loop. Another coil. But in this coil, I am not putting out any battery or Key, but just I put a galvanometer okay. Remember, the current which is flowing through this wire, it cannot pass through this iron rod. The current cannot pass through this iron rod. Why the current cannot pass through this iron rod? Because uh, the wires, they are insulated. We are using laminated wire. Since the wires are laminated or insulated, so the current cannot pass through the, uh, the current cannot pass through the wire. Uh, the current cannot pass through the metal. Right, but yes, what will happen? We know that uh, we know that solenoid behaves as a magnet. So if current is passed through this, if you turn on this key, if you turn on this key, so this solenoid will become the magnet, and hence it will magnetize the iron piece inside it. So this complete iron piece will become magnetized. This complete iron piece will become a magnet. Okay. So on this principle, if we turn on this key. If we turn on this key, so we will find that uh, this primary coil, this primary coil where I have put a cell, so in this primary coil, the current will increase, the current will start flowing, and the solenoid will become a magnet, and therefore the complete iron rod will become a magnet. Okay. Yes. So if the, if the complete iron rod becomes a magnet, so there will be magnetic field lines which will be crossing this wire also? Yes. Yes, so there will be magnetic field lines which will be crossing this wire. So can I expect some current in the secondary coil? Yes, so there will be. Yes, there will be a current in the secondary coil because we observe here 
that the magnetic field lines which are linked with this coil, they are changing, they are increasing. So there will be a momentary current, only a momentary current, because once you switch it on, so when the magnetic field, initially the magnetic field was zero, and then the magnetic field increases. So if the magnetic field increases, so there will be an increase in the, there will be change in the uh, magnetic field lines crossing the secondary coil, and hence you will observe a current. But once it is kept on, once it is kept on, then what will happen? Then whatever magnetic field lines were crossing this, they have crossed and they are now constant. They are not changing. So if I observe, if I observe that there is no change of the magnetic field lines, so there will not be any current. Got it? So there will be a current only when there will be a current only when there is a change in the magnetic field lines. So if you keep the key uh, key on. There will not be any current. But when you turn it on, that's the first time initially you will have a current in the secondary coil. Your galvanometer will show a momentary deflection. For a moment, it will show you a deflection and then it will again come to zero because it's just like you have kept a magnet inside the coil. Okay. It's just like you are making this magnet move. You are making this magnet move towards this coil initially and when you came here, you kept the magnet stand still. So then there will not be any current. Okay. So understood this experiment? Okay. Yes, so this sir. Phenomena, this phenomena is called as mutual induction. Inducing of electric current in the secondary coil using a primary coil. Okay. It's called as mutual induction. This is also an electromagnetic induction. But this phenomena is called as mutual induction. Okay. What will happen if I turn off the key? Will there be any change if I turn off the key? The current will not be produced in the secondary coil as well. Cur current is still not produced. When you turn it on, once you turn it on, so while you make it on, that's the only time you will observe a current in the secondary coil. After that, there will not be any current. Even if the circuit is on, even if for the primary, the circuit is on, then also there will not be any current in the secondary. The current was there only when you turn it on. Momentarily, when you turn it on, so that's the moment when you will observe a current in the secondary. But what will happen if you turn it off? Will there be any changes? The answer is, if you turn it off, so the magnetic field lines which were present, they will now start to decrease. They will now start to vanish. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So the magnetic field lines which were present earlier, they will now start to vanish. So it seems as if you are drawing the magnet out of this coil. So again, you will observe, again, you will observe a uh, current in the secondary coil. So there will be a momentary current now in the secondary coil, but in the opposite direction. Now your galvanometer will show a deflection in the opposite direction if you uh, put the key off. And that will also be a momentary current. So from these activities, we observe that there will be a current only if there is a change in the magnetic field. Line. The magnetic field lines which are crossing if their number changes, if the magnetic field lines change, then also then only there is current. If the magnetic field lines do not change, then there is no current. Got it? Understood the phenomena of electromagnetic induction? Yes, sir. Okay. So this phenomena was uh, we'll study here about the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Let's see the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Okay. So I have just discussed you about a magnetic flux also. See here. 
just i say this magnetic flux magnetic flux it is the number of magnetic field lines crossing a given area normally so this is called as magnetic flux it is, is measured in si units of weber the si units of magnetic flux is weber okay and the formula or the symbol for magnetic flux is phi if it's written here we have done the symbol for magnetic flux is phi so phi is equal to b a cos theta where phi represents flux b represents magnetic field a represents area of cross section a represents the area of cross section okay that means the area which they are crossing and cos theta where theta is the angle between area vector and magnetic field lines so okay. we take only the component of the magnetic field lines which are crossing the area normally okay so by this this is si unit on the other side the si unit of magnetic flux as weber and this is equal to te uh, tesla meter square t stands for tesla what's the uh, for what for what thing we use tesla as the si unit yes just one tesla is the si unit for magnetic field magnetic field okay. so tesla is the si unit of magnetic field and weber is the si unit of magnetic flux okay so okay so let's see i think we have understood about how to generate or how to produce electric current so let us see and in the similar way we can have a um, functioning of electric motor or electric generator so electric generator is the one which uses chemical energy to chemical energy or it converts your mechanical energy into electrical energy based on the phenomena of electromagnetic induction okay. now you have the next one that faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so michael faraday was the scientist who studied about the magnetic field lines he studied about magnetism and a number of fa factors was studied by him and you might have heard about his stories that michael faraday he was working on in a book binding store so this is michael faraday So Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So according to the Faraday's law, there are two statements. One of the statements we just observed for the Faraday's law. This statement indicates that varying magnetic field varying magnetic field creates electric potential or electric current. So we call it as electric EMF. Electric EMF means potential only. So it's another name for potential. EMF, which stands for electromotive force. Okay. Its meaning is similar to your electric potential only. So there will be an electric potential created by varying magnetic field. If you vary magnetic field, so there will be an electric EMF which is generated. The second law states that according to him, the second, according to Faraday's second law, the induced EMF
the induced emf is proportional proportional to the time rate of change of magnetic field so what it means to us the second first statement i think we have understood everyone has understood about the first statement yes so according to the second statement second statement says that induced emf is pro emf is proportional to the time rate of change of magnetic field time rate of change of magnetic field means the uh, if you change the magnetic field so how fast you are changing the magnetic field that rate will be equal to the emf or that will be equal to the induced potential okay so greater the voltage if you want a greater voltage so you need to vary the magnetic field more quickly so you we write here emf is proportional to change of flux by time d phi by dt okay so rate of flux is equal to change of magnetic field d phi by dt got it so this was about the faraday's law and this we have done about induction of electric current or induced emf by varying magnetic field now in the next class we will do about the alternating current we will see how the alternating currents produce how are the alternating currents produced and what is an alternating current? Bye, everyone. Good day and see you all in next class. Yes. Thank you, Sabas. Thank you, Sabas.